When Bill Borum first approached me with the uh, suggestion that I might be interested in moderating this entire series of events, and I said that was totally impossible. Uh, I, I didn't have time to pick it because they're on Thursday, which is a production date in the index 50. But then he said, well, there, there's some people you might be interested in being here for. And one of them was you know, Charles Blessing. <laughs> And um, I said, well, hell, I have to do that. Um, I, I had the great pleasure of meeting John Charles for the first time at one of his several California vineyards, wineries, framing in the Napa Valley. And I have to describe this meeting just for a moment because I was standing outside the winery on a hot summer day, and a very dapper gentleman walked up. And we shook hands. For some reason I can't remember, he said, let's look at our shoes. <laughs> and we all stuck out our shoes. And John Charles was wearing red socks. <laughs> so that is not, that is not <laughs> uh, as I had the great pleasure of getting to know John Charles, I discovered that besides an extraordinary sense of style, he is an extraordinarily smart and uh, visionary businessman. I'm not going to take from him the story he may very well tell you about his early history in Sonoma, but I will say that in the last year, he has given us back an enormous part of our early history. If you have not been to Buena Vista Winery in the last year or so, you absolutely owe it to yourself to go see it. Um, there are a lot of things we can say about Jean Charles I say he is a gentleman, he is a bit of a dandy in the best sense of the word, and he is a historian, and he has done something for the Sonoma Valley, for wine country in California, oddly enough, that no American has been able to do. Uh, it's a great pleasure. Jean Charles Boisset. Well, it is really an honor to uh, be with all of you for an incredible amount of reasons. And i got to say, as I was driving up here, we were with our friends uh, Tom at Sonoma Best. He did a little tasting, and we met a lot of people from the community who some of them are here. And it was so pleasant then to drive to the square and suddenly here to see the stadium and to really get the feeling of the village. And meeting all of you and greeting you, some of you, and introducing ourselves to you as a community is extraordinary because I was very fortunate, extremely fortunate to be born in a tiny village in Burgundy named Bougeau. And I've met a few ladies who have been here earlier today for tasting in the Joash Alberta. And I was born in that tiny village of 176 people. It was 43 years ago. I'm pleased to report today, 43 years later, we are still 176 people. <laughs> I still know everyone in the village, and vice versa, and this has an incredible feel. And as our mayor is so sweet to be here as well tonight, the feel of Sonoma makes you not only feel welcome, but at the same time inspired. From where I'm from, specifically in Kuta, Burgundy, the heart of the finest fields and charmants in this planet today, the Cistercian monk played a great role. And here, we obviously had all those phenomenal missions, which played an incredible role a few meters away from. So, my grandparents, who escaped in the Second World War with American soldiers, re-entered the resistance, escaped again, and obviously built an incredible network throughout France of resisting, had always this unbelievable image of coming to America. They had not come, but they had this 
American dream vision, this American lifestyle ideal that you all created, whether it's yourself, your parents, grandparents, and that ultimate vision of this phenomenal country. So their dream was actually to always take us to the U.S. So extremely fortunate, and this is why it's so special to me today, Sonoma, and from Bill to David to be asked to come and, and share a little bit about our story, is because my grandparents wanted to take us to California. So, like the Kelton Buena Vista, so my grandparents always had that vision that the place we should come was California. So they very kindly saved, took us on that amazing trip, my sister and I. My sister was 15, I was 11. And we obviously, Mr. Garcia, went to Monterey, which was a cornerstone of the California historical culture of the old capital and the Mexican leadership. We went to, naturally, of course, all the beautiful coastline. We drove to San Francisco, visited all the great monuments, went on Montgomery Street, to, of course, without any way you can miss it, in any guys, the famous uh, diligence, the Wells Fargo trolley or horse carriage. And we did a variety of things till, till the moment my grandparents say, you know, we're living in two days, we've got to go on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge. And this is where we need to go, is a small town named Sonoma. I remember forever they were debating, shall we go to Sacramento or shall we go to Sonoma? You know, historical teachers. And very fortunately, very fortunately, they said Sonoma is the place to go. Get in the car, my grandparents were on the oldest side already, but not, you know, driving around 30 miles an hour. <laughs> we nearly got stopped because we were going too slow, actually. And we drove to the square. And we had a lot of emotions because we had the pleasure to discover the famous corner of the earth flags to the 1850 moments. We visited the barracks. We saw the museums. We went to Vallejo's house. We did everything we had to do. Till we saw a sign. Buena Vista. We are here. That's a Dijon child, do you want to go and see what it is done? What do we say? Finally, we're going to drink some wine, finally. So we went on that lovely road that you know, and we arrived at Buena Vista where we park again today, which is on that lovely area next to our fantastic neighbors. And we walked, and the walk was mesmerizing of those amazing trees. And the way of the past, the understanding of history, the moment you stepped in, spoke high volume. Very fortunately, we arrived at the tasting room and found someone incredible to give us a tour. Keep in mind, my grandparents, again, school teachers, they want to know every detail, every stone, everything. That we've counted, Miss Perry just did an amazing postcard for us at uh, Buena Vista. And you counted every stone to make sure it balanced, right? And I remember my grandmother had every single question on earth you can imagine. But, which was very impactful for Natalie and I was the walk to the second building David very kindly referred to, which is the actual winery, the first gravity field building in the history of California. And we came in, and I was immobile for a while. I could not believe that wine had started in the 1850s under that statue. And I said to myself, this is incredible. This is a white house. This is one of the best monuments I've seen on this trip. And you know, we had a vision when you're born in Burgundy, you think there's only Burgundy. And you know how the French are. This is all about themselves. <laughs> I don't think I need to tell you that. You already know this. So, which was very impressive is we went in tour of the vaults, as they called it. We did a barrel tasting, or they did a barrel tasting. And we learned about the chiseling from the Chinese and the whole influence of the Count of Buena Vista. And I had shivers in my back till my grandparents went to the bar, tasted the wines, and 
my sister and I were here, 11, 15, salivating, saying, what about us? <laughs> and they did something very fantastic. It is very fortunately, they obviously took us on this big trip, and they said, we're going to have you put your lips in this one. And they bought the three most amazing bottles of Chardonnay, very similar to the one we tasted today. We went back on the square, and they had booked a small hotel that many of you will remember. It's where Lenson is today, or in that neighborhood. I remember this in Asiani Theater. And we were sharing the same room. They sat us on the bed, and they said, okay, now, before we go to dinner, we had an amazing time, your grandfather and I. My grandmother was always a big speaker. You were going to do the same tasting as the she opened the little cellophane plastic glasses. I mean, the hotel was quite humble. Sharing a room, we sat on the bed, tried those three Chardonnays, and it absolutely transcended my expectations. And I had made Chardonnay already at that time, tasted Chardonnays many times. But I pinched my sister, and I said to her, wouldn't it be fun one day if we could come back to California? I really believe in the world of wine that we have the pleasure to always evolve into is we are really one world of wine. Ocean separates us, but wine always brings us together. What is important in this world we feel, specifically with the winery like Renanista, is we are entitled to make zero mistakes. We have an extremely large responsibility, not towards the future, in a way, towards the past. It's not about what we're going to do, but it's about what people have done before us. This is why we keep saying Buena Vista tagline is the future of Buena Vista is its past. We have so much to talk about from your American passport, from your American flag, that we cannot omit the past and certainly acknowledge it, respect it, and put it tonight. This is why it has been a lot of fun to work on several things. One was the sisterhood, with obviously a very famous town in Hungary, Tokai. As you all know, you work so diligently to finally bring the history of the town of Tokai, which produces the best dessert wine in the world. They've been our inspiration, even in Sotel, in Bordeaux, or everywhere in the world. You succeeded to bring Tokai to the cinema square and to the history of cinema, which is very important. And why are we excited about this? Because we feel the square you have, the town you have, the state you have, deserves the most amazing publicity, not only in the United States, but around the world. And us, whether we're French, whether we're Bulgarian, whether we're German, whether we're Italian, whether we're Mexican, whatever nationality we have, we feel we owe it beyond the founding fathers to all the people who sculpted this incredible country to speak about it. <laughs> this place is where it all started. Yes. Remember, Charles Krug, even in 1861, was given some vines by this young man. Right, Cal? Indeed, yes. sir. You told him, go to the other side of the Michaelis Mountain, fed calves, and come back in a few years and make the case. It all started in Sonoma. So, ladies and gentlemen, to your amazing state, first of all, your amazing country. We're coming out of the label with Dead Sea Ross. This is why I was quite excited <laughs> to look at the formation of the flag. And uh, thank you so much for, for coming tonight, taking a little bit of time away with your family and, and friends to come to this great place, to listen into a broken accent, a little bit of a story. And I hope it didn't appear as a lecture, because it was really more, hopefully, a conversation or an experience. Because I have nothing to teach, I only have to receive. So thank you so much.